Hey everyone, this is Mohit from Tenika Creations. Welcome to the third video in the Stranger Things tutorial series. This video wasn't initially planned by the way. In this tutorial, let's put our logo to create the Stranger Things like intro. If you happen to like this video, please do support the channel, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Guys, share this video and help me get to 5000 subscribers as quickly as possible. So let's get into Fusion and figure this thing out. Before we start, let me clearly say that we could have used this technique that I'm using in this tutorial for the previous parts as well, but I wanted to show you the character level styling method. Also, I'll be covering two formats for the logo. The first will be a PNG image with transparent background and the second will be an SVG image which makes our job so much easier. First, we'll be working with a PNG image, so we'll have to break the logo apart into small small pieces which can be animated later on. So now let's set the time range to 360 frames. Inside the flow we have one node that is my logo. So I'm going to drag it to the viewer. Click on fit. I'm also going to click on this button here to bring up the black background. And before we do anything else, I'm going to right click inside the flow and go to arrange tools to grid. Now what that will do is it will just snap these nodes to these grids. So that will help us keep the node flow tidy and organized. Okay. To the logo, I'm going to add a transform node and drag it to the viewer. Set the size to 0.7. The reason I did that is because I'll be breaking this logo into small, small pieces. And as we already know, we'll have to move these characters up and also in the horizontal direction. So I don't want the symbol to be going outside this frame because if that happens, it will be a problem for us later on because whichever part goes outside this frame will be cut off in the animation. So let's move on. So I'm going to copy this, these two nodes and then paste it six times. Okay. Control C to copy and then paste it. Click inside the flow again, paste, click inside the flow, control V to paste, control V, control V, control V. I think that'll be enough. So these are going to represent different, different parts in the logo. So to this one, I'm going to add one rectangle mask. Okay. Drag it over here. And then I'm going to move this to the left like so and then reduce the width adjust it so that only the symbol is visible inside the rectangle okay so this way we have isolated this one so if i want i can move that symbol alone separately okay so control c to undo that so similarly i'm going to add one more rectangle mask here and connect it to this one okay and this time drag it to the viewer and then I'm going to drag this one up like so and then reduce the width. Let me see. We'll just concentrate on edge this time for this one. Okay. Zoom into the viewer and let's reduce the width like so. So we have isolated edge this time. So similarly, let's click on this rectangle, copy that and paste it over here connect it to this one and then drag it to the viewer and then let's just move it to the right till it reaches K. So I'm going to isolate K with this one. Okay. Increase the width a little bit. Okay. So that's okay. So next. So then I'm going to copy this one, control C and then paste it here, connect it to this one and then drag this one down like so drag this to this viewer and then let's see let's concentrate on r this time okay so reduce the width and so let's pull it down so that it doesn't overlap with the line fit then click on that rectangle copy that click here inside the flow and paste Connect it to this one, drag this one to the viewer. Okay. And then move it to the right so that we just get N. Okay. Increase the width so that it just fits inside that mask. 
okay for the next one i'm going to add one more rectangle mask drag it over here and connect this to this one and with this one i'm going to drag it here and then let's isolate just the line okay let's bring it down like so okay and then move it to the right side like so and then increase the width just enough so that we get the entire line inside and then decrease the height okay so that way we have isolated the line as well so there's a little bit of problem here let's bring it down like so yes that'll be fine fit okay so we have isolated the line as well next we'll also need the rest of the items which is not included in this so again i'm going to add one more rectangle mask okay and i'm going to drag it over here okay then i'm going to copy all these rectangle masks Control c and then paste it over here okay maybe like so okay then connect this to this connect this to this this to this let's just continue doing that till we get to the last one and then connect that to this one okay so what do we get let's drag it into the viewer and check what we have this is what we have right now if we drag this this rectangle we can see that only so much of the logo is covered so let's increase the size of it so that everything is covered inside the mask okay the whole of the logo should be covered inside the mask okay so now select this one and change the paint mode to subtract okay so continue doing for every other node there let's do that for this one as well for this one and the last one for the line okay so this is the rest of the logo and we'll be animating these parts okay so let's merge all these together now so connect the output of this transform node to the output of this transform node connect the output of this merge to the output of this transform node keep doing that let's continue doing that output to output of the transform connect the output of this one to this connect the output of this to this okay then drag it to this viewer fit and then click on this button to bring the black background okay so now we use these transform nodes to reduce the size of the logo i don't want to touch that i'm going to use another set of transform nodes to do the animation so i'm going to click on this one add a transform node select this one add a transform node and keep doing that for each of these nodes so we have one transform node which will be used to animate the characters if i select this one and move this you can see that we can move that symbol alone okay Control z so just to make it all easier for us to understand i'm going to rename all of this so i'm going to first of all select all these and change its color right click go to set color and set tile color select this one whichever it doesn't matter and this one i'm going to press f2 and call it symbol press f2 for this one and let's call it h this f2 and call it k this will be r this will be n and then select this one call it line and this will be let's just call it rest that's good so now we have isolated different parts from the logo let's go ahead and animate it okay so at frame 0 i'm going to select h and then go to the center over here and set this value to 0.56 okay then right click at the center go to modify with xy path i'm not going to spend too much time here let's go to 100 and then set this value back to 0.5 okay 
and then select k go to 0 let's set it to 0.58 okay right click modify with xy path and then go to 170 and set this value back to 0.5 select r go to 0 and i'm going to set this value to say 0.4 right click at the center modify with xy path and then go to 120 and set it back to 0.5 select n this time go to 0 and set this value to 0.4 okay yeah all right right click modify with x y path and then go to 170 and set this value back to 0.5 in fact for uh, this one for r i'm going to set this value to 0.45 uh, okay like that that'll be good enough then let's select line and i want to scale it so i'm going to click on this one to separate x and y so i can scale it in x alone okay but there's a problem if we scale it down you'll see that it is not scaling from the center it is scaling from the center of the frame right so we need to change that we want it to scale from the center of the line so that's why we'll be using this pivot okay it's very hard to select it right now when both are set to 0.5 so i'm going to set this value to 0.2 and then click on that from there and then drag it over here okay so yeah i think i'll just place it like so okay i think it is in the middle so just move it a little bit this side i think that'll be enough okay and then at let's go to frame 125 and then set this x size to zero okay and set a key for that go to 165 65 and set it back to default okay so that is that and let's then select the symbol and go to zero and i'm going to set this x value to 0.35 for that okay and then right click at the center modify with x5 path then go to 170 like so and then set it back to 0.5 I also want to rotate it so in for this one also i want to adjust the pivot so i'm going to select the pivot set it to 0.25 so that's more or less at the center of this one so i don't think i have to change that let it be as it is okay so at 170 i'm going to set a key for the angle there and then at frame zero i'm going to set this to a value of 135 okay something like that then i'll select all of these all of these nodes go to spline editor select all and then fit click inside the graph editor Control a to select all the keyframes press f to flat then press t to bring up the handle values click on lock in and out and set this value to 50 okay so that's okay let's go back into the flow and just select our line come back into the spline editor selection click on selection and select these two keyframes and set this value to 70 that'll be good enough so if you see we have our animation so we have taken care of the problems that we had with the png image now let's make it look like stranger things which is quite easy i'm going to add a background node and then connect this to the mask input of the background okay and then like earlier in the previous tutorials i'm going to change the color change this to 0.3 and this one will be 0.75 okay reduce these values and go to radial select this point and pull it over there and then do the same thing with this one let's put it there okay so if i drag it to the viewer like that this is what we get okay now let's make it look like stranger things so i'm going to add a erode node erode node okay and a channel boolean channel booleans okay okay drag it over here connect the output of this to the background input of the erode node connect the output of the background to the background input of the channel booleans 
Then connect the output of the erode node to the foreground input of the channel booleans. Select channel booleans and change the operation to subtract. Drag it to the viewer and let's reduce the erode to get this result. But you can see that my logo has very thin characters and this erode value is not really doing much to that. I can reduce it like so. But still, it's, it's not enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these and then I'm going to expand this logo a little bit. So select this one and then I will add one more erode node here. Erode, shift space bar, erode, okay. And then select this one and I'm going to increase the thickness for this one. Like, not so much, I don't want this issue. So let's reduce it like maybe five. Okay, that'll be good enough, I think. Now we got the look that we were looking for. And again, I don't want to repeat everything that I showed in the previous video. So anyone who has not watched the previous video, they can click on the link up here and you can watch that video there. So I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to go to the other previous file and then copy these notes, control C and then come back in here. And this is really one of the beautiful things about Fusion that we can simply copy notes from some other comp and bring it in here and paste it. And it's going to work seamlessly. Connect the output of this channel boolean to the background input of this channel boolean. And if we just drag it to the viewer, we'll have all the changes that we did earlier in this one. Okay, so I'm going to preview this just so that you can see what we have achieved. Okay, and let's render. It's done, so I'll press F4 to expand and then play it. So you can see that all that that we did in the previous video is there right now. So I'll press F4 again to come out of the expanded view. And if we want, then we can actually duplicate these lines and get it over here. I'm not going to be doing this in this tutorial, however. So again, we can easily copy these and then paste it over here and then drag this line over there to get one line there and another here. So anyways, uh, I'll just stop at this one with the PNG image. For the SVG format, I'm going to open a new composition. Okay, this one is very easy actually. I can just go to file again, go to import, go to SVG, and then import this one, whichever is your logo in SVG format. Because it is vector, we can choose a size, adjust it before we drag it into the flow. So I'll just keep it as it is and press OK. OK, so the SVG image has come in as a group. So it is a group of all the vector shapes. Clearly, click on this button to get the black background. If you open this, you will see that we have all the shapes that form this logo. So if we select each of these, so we have these characters separate. So we can easily animate it, select that polygon and then we can animate it, right? So there's no problem of separating individual characters or any of those things. So this is very straightforward. So this is another way we can use our logo and animate it in a way that it looks like the Stranger Things in. So I think that covers the topic. Like always, if you have any doubts about something that was shown in this video, drop in a comment and I'll get to it at the earliest. And if you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up and keep watching my videos. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. In case you're already subscribed, hit that bell icon so that you get notified for every new upload on this channel at Tenika Creations. Share this video on social media platforms. It helps. Thanks a lot for watching. This is Mohit signing off and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.